Everybody, welcome to today's live stream. And uh, we got a lot of things to go over. I mean, a lot of things to go over. So let's just jump right in. So really what this all comes down to the title and the thumbnail and everything else is just about rumors and how that's going to push up the Bitcoin market, Bitcoin and crypto market, but how it's, uh, it's like lighting, it's like putting gas on fire, but on the same token, uh, you can also get burned. So this is what we're talking about today, rumors. So this today, we talked yesterday about of course, the, the spot Bitcoin ETF and how it's going to be great. And we talked about some of the, the some low cap gems that people might be getting into. But I said, you know, it might be a good idea to take a look at the Bitcoin ecosystem. And we, and we laid out three. Of course, we talked about Bitcoin. And then uh, we talked about stacks, which is a layer two uh, for smart contracts. And then we talked about ordinals or transcriptions, uh, essentially NFTs in the Bitcoin blockchain. And uh, we, taught, we took a look at Ordinal or Ordi, one of the uh, tokens, and how it had just had a monstrous run. But then this morning... I saw this. This is uh, Luke Dashir. Nailed it. Roman Catholic, husband, father of eight children. Wow. Bitcoin core developer and CTO at Ocean Mining. Uh, so into uh, definitely uh, knows his way around Bitcoin. And he talks and he put out a tweet. He said, hey, a PSA, public service announcement, inscriptions, i.e. ordinals, are exploiting a vulnerability in Bitcoin Core to spam the blockchain. Bitcoin Core has, since 2013, allowed users to set a limit on the size of extra data in transactions they rely, they relay or mine. By obfuscating their data as program code, inscriptions bypass this limit. So basically what he's saying is like, we don't like ordinals. We don't want them to be on the Bitcoin blockchain. They suck, and we're going to remove them. This bug was recently fixed in Bitcoin Knots v2 5.1. It took longer than usual due to my workflow being severely disrupted at the end of the last year. Bitcoin Core is still vulnerable in the upcoming v26 release. I can only hope it will finally get fixed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I thought it was interesting because I'm like, wow, here's a core developer talking about that. But then I thought to myself, is this all core developers speaking? And the question from Jaspi is, is, so if this is a bug or vulnerability is fixed, does it mean ordinals and BRC20 tokens would stop being a thing? I'm confused. Please explain it. He said, yeah, that's right. Once we get this all out, we're going to get rid of ordinals, which I got to tell you, uh, that would be pretty bad for number 53, which is Ordi, which has done a massive run <laughs> over the last 30 days. Look at this. In 30 days, it's up 786.5%. In the last seven days, up 229%. A lot of people have gotten into this. It has a market cap of $1.32 billion. And the trading volume has been 1.8, almost $2 billion in trading volume. What the heck is going on? So I just took a look at what's happening in the Twitterverse. And I said, wait, 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 hold off on these already buys. Let's, let's get to the bottom of this. And then I said, hey, uh-oh, because... It went from a high of like 62.50, 62.77 or something like that. And it dropped away to $45 in less than like 12 hours. So you're thinking to yourself, is this gonna crash all the way? And of course, Steven says, who would publicize this vulnerability? And he says, PS, I got some already. Now, here's where it gets interesting. This is insight from F2 Pool. And this is, was put out by Wu Blockchain. Bitcoin developer Luke Dasher responded that after the vulnerability is fixed, it means that ordinals of BRC20 will no longer exist. Shen Yu, co-founder of F2 Pool, said in the community, Bitcoin is not Ethereum. That's a, that's a good, pretty good stab. And developers do not have full decision-making power, meaning essentially that the community will decide and the, the Bitcoin operators, the miners will decide. And I got to tell you, last week, uh, Bitcoin had higher transaction fees than Ethereum did because of why? Ordinals. So I was thinking to myself, why would they get rid of that? That's what the people want, the people. But here we are. And then there was another little piece. Where did I put it? Let me go back up here. Uh -uh. Where? Aha. Let me go back. This piece. So the last piece for your consideration, a little bit of a little perspective. Udi, of course, responsible for ordinals, or one of the people responsible for ordinals. He goes, I was asked by the block for my thoughts on Luke. And here's what he says. Luke has made some sporadic contributions to open source Bitcoin projects over the years, but he does not own the chain. Co-founded the Bitcoin ordinals project, Taproot Wizards. Udi told the block. He's been rage tweeting about ordinals inscriptions since February. 
and was unable to stop them. We expect the coping and seeding to continue as ordinals further shrinking their position as the main use case of the Bitcoin chain. We'd like to use this opportunity to thank Luke for hosting our wizard JPEGs on his Bitcoin nodes forever. So again, it is amazing to me. Let me just break this down. The last 24 hours, here's what happened to ordinals or to Ordi, the token. You had $63. Somebody tweets that they're going to remove it and it goes from 63 to 43. That's quite a drop. And then, of course, everybody gets it sorted out. And then here it comes up again. So again, pay attention to the power that is the rumor because they can move markets. And I hate to say that. I mean, let's be honest. Maybe Gary's got a point on some of these things. And now some of you are looking at this like, like saying, well, I'm too late, Rob. We talked about this yesterday. I missed the boat. You didn't miss anything. I want, you to, I want to show you a chart real quick. Would you buy this right now? I'm not going to tell you what it is, but look at this. It didn't do anything. This is back in 2020. It didn't do anything. The price was 50 cents, 60 cents, you know, for months and months and months. And then somehow it just started to blow up. And it went from 60 cents over here, 90 cents. It doubled, dollar eighty or so. And then it came over here and did 370. And then it came here, 478. That's a pretty good run from August to June. Two months roughly, right? Would you, I'm just gonna ask you right now, would you buy into this? You don't know what the token is. Would you buy this? We'd be like, I missed my opportunity. There's no way. Because if you look at that, you're like, that's that's already pumped. I missed it. I missed it. Well, guess what, friends? That's Solana. And Solana, you are here. <laughs> you are all the way down here. And if you would have said, I missed it at over, geez, Louise, over here, you missed all this. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm just saying there's a lot of runway to happen. And this is a very strange bull run. This is the most frantic, frantic that I've seen so far. And there will be some pullbacks. There will be some problems. But I think this is one of those runs that we could really see, I mean, real face melting stuff. Anyhow, let me show you anything about that in the comment section. And speaking of rumors, this might be one of the reasons why yesterday we saw a big pump. And again, I asked the community, because I'm not that smart. I need the help of everybody who's smarter than me, which is not hard to do, I might add. And I said, can anyone confirm the rumor that Qatar is adding Bitcoin to its sovereign wealth fund? Because this was from Max Kaiser. No problems with Max. He seems to really love Bitcoin. <laughs> let's, be, let's, be, let's be truthful. And he put this out. He says, the God candle a $100,000 uptick in Bitcoin is in play. It will shift the global access of wealth and power in one tick. I have one word for you, $100,000 Bitcoin. Qatar. The rumors are getting very loud on this. The SWF rumored to look to buy a half a trillion in Bitcoin and add it to their sovereign wealth fund. And then on top of that, Mad Monkey sent me this. He goes, hey, Rob's looking pretty good. The Emir of Qatar just landed in El Salvador. So that means they're going to, that might be true. Half a trillion dollars put it into put into a sovereign wealth fund of Bitcoin. Well, no wonder it's going up. I don't even know what it is today. I lost count. But then, documenting Cardano made a good point. Why would Qatar announce or, or leak this before buying? Good question. Unless they've already done it already. And the next thing is here from Matrix. It says, no, nah, I don't think so. The Qatar Investment Authority... Estimated there is $475 billion of their wealth fund of assets under management. $475 billion. They're missing $25 billion. So you're telling me they're going to put all of it into Bitcoin, a sovereign wealth fund? I'm just saying. Kind of fishy. I don't know where to believe that or not. That just is a rumor. But again, what can rumors do? Well, I'll show you what they can do. They can make Bitcoin go again, bobble up above 44,000. Did it hit 45? Now it's at 43.9. See, I spoke too soon. We can see that rumors and enticements, and especially like you hear about the ETFs, 99% approved, 90% approved. It, they're basically in the bag. And this is what happens with rumors. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying watch yourself because guess what? Some rumors are legit, some maybe not. And lastly, Whoops, another rumor, which I like this one. Oh, good. This is from Kagi. 
Keg, he's got a great uh, YouTube channel and on, on X. He says, breaking. My source say with confidence that there's a big possibility of the Sandbox game moves to the RON or Ronin network. Sandbox is hundreds of partnerships with big names of brands such as Ubisoft, Snoop Dogg, Biggie, Dead Mouse, blah, blah, blah. And I will say this. Uh, Helium not too long ago moved to Solana, did they not? It didn't work out pretty well for Helium. I'm just saying. Would it happen? I don't know. But it's an interesting prospect. And so far, Keg has been pretty good. Well, we had him on on August 30th. His top picks were, this was three months ago, Ronin, Alluvium, Immutable X, Game Swift, and Avogachi. He did great on all of them, as a matter of fact. So with all these things happening, I had to have Kagi back on, and we did a quick little interview. This is about 12 minutes or so. And listen to what he says about Ronin and a couple of different Web3 prospects that I even I didn't know about. So I'm going to play the interview right now. Then we'll come back, and we'll do a little Q&A, and we will go from there. So just uh, take a listen. Let me add this in, and away we go. So we know that the Web3 crypto gaming landscape is uh, absolutely exploding. And thankfully, I've got somebody uh, much smarter than me to talk about it. And we've got uh, <laughs> Kagi back on the show for the second time. Kagi, welcome back to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, man. Thank you for bringing me back. I always enjoy my time here. Well, this is my second time, but the first time I enjoyed myself. So let's get it. Let's get it. It was fun time. And just to bring everybody back in like a little bit of a walk down memory lane, uh, you can find uh, Kagi. He's on a, a plethora of different uh, uh, social media platforms, uh, Twitter or X being one of them, a lot of good uh, content over there. Also, uh, he's got his YouTube channel, links in the description. And the last time you were here, Kagi, we took a look at just Web3 Gaming. And I wanted to get the best and the brightest in the field. So it was you, Stash, Johnny Hustle, and uh, Jesus Martinez, uh, formerly Classy Games. And the plays that you laid out for us, which is now in Dan Teaches Crypto on the 100% free website. Everybody should sign up for that. I don't even spam you. But your plays were pretty solid. Ronin, Alluvium, Immutable X, Game Swift, and Avogachi. And this was on August 30th, I'll remind everybody. And uh, of course, I've been hearing this a lot from Stash forever. But uh, in the last, uh, oh, I don't know, 30, 60 days, you guys have been proven right. So you had Ronin, which you called back then at 50 cents. And now we're, geez, the leads are out at $1.20. Immutable X, you called it over here at 54 cents, even before that. And it topped out at $1.38. Now we're at $1.42. Game Swift, again, it uh, was 7 cents. And it went up to, good Lord, 47 cents. And Avogachi, eh, okay. Kind of flat, a little bit of a pump uh, in the last 90 days, but not too bad. And now, of course, uh, one of your bigger plays is Ronin and Pixel. So I got to ask you the question, because I tried playing this, and I, like it's a very simple game, and of course farming, but why Pixels and why Ronin? And then we'll get into some of your other uh, top 10 plays and what you think. Yes, absolutely. I, I think f first let's start with Ronin. Right? Okay. Ronin in reality is the number one uh, gaming chain. Every single one of those chains that I mentioned before, their potential, they have potential, like immutable um game swift these are a change with potential they're they they do not actually have the completed product but you know we are in a speculative market so people love to look at the future right but if we're talking about pure numbers and pure products out in the market and users as well ronin is number one in the gaming chains most of the chains do not have their product ready so that is why a lot of games are actually wanting to build on ronin and they have a little bit of a closed ecosystem. Um, mm -hmm. They rather not dilute their user base by just bringing a bunch of games just to look good. So they are picking games one by one and making sure that they have the most upside for their users and for themselves as well, right? When you look at Immutable, they have like 200 games, right? Right. But this, a lot of those games might fail. But that's another strategy. It's not a bad strategy. It's just another strategy. Ronin's strategy is little by little opening, opening up the ecosystem for their users so that their users do not get wrecked. So that is a good strategy, in my opinion, especially in a market where a lot of people come here to grab liquidity and get out by the end of the bear market, uh, the bull market. Gotcha. So yeah. talk to us, talk to us real quick about the Ronin chain itself. I know they have pixels on there. What mm -hmm. do they have right now or what is coming out? What's the big play there? Because it sounds to me like Ronin, the chain, is it like a studio? Is it a chain? Is it just one single game? How does this work? It's a chain, and that is what chains are doing right now. They're acting as publishers as well. Mm. They're acting as publishers. 
So it's a, it's a blockchain, but they're also allowing games to come in and use their infrastructure so that they can publish their games under the running network. And Immutable is doing the same thing. GameSwift is doing the same thing, right? So you can actually download the Mavis Hub, which is a hub where you can find a lot of games. And right now we have Axie Infinity, Machines Arena, Tribster. Um, there's some others there. Wild Forest, that's a really good game, and Pixels. And huh. there's a few other games coming next year. Next year they're gonna ramp it up. Um, there's some, there's some, uh, there's some leaks out there of some MMORPG coming to Ronin. Like I said, it's everything is little by little. They have a lot of requests, a lot of requests. We just recently saw the head of um, Ronin say on Twitter, she said, "I am dealing with 80 deals as of right now. Um, this is overwhelming, but it's exciting and all of that." So you see, like they're doing it. Behind mm -hmm. the scenes, they're not just flashing. Oh, here, partnership, partnership, partnership. Mm. It's a very meticulous way to go about it. Holy smokes, eighty deals! I, I think, and this is what we talk about here in the channel. We take a look at because we went through a pretty brutal bear market. Now we're coming out of it. It's been quite some time, but I've always said this before: the ones that actually build in the bear will crush it in the bull. And I think that is one of those systems, like what you guys did. I mean, for all of the the Web three and the gaming, you guys took your took your lumps for quite a long time. Like I said, I heard crypto stash on this two years ago, three years ago. And I'm like, all right, buddy, sure. And now here we are right now. And I got to tell you, like, if you got 80, not, and, and we know that 80 games are coming, but they'll probably, it'll be like an incubator probably. Like, look, okay, this game looks good. This one's falling off. We're going to exactly. do this one. They're going to take the best. They're looking at 80 yeah. deals, like 80 potential. That's what it, that's what she meant. Yeah. Gotcha. You know, we had, uh, we had uh, Jesus Martinez on from what was classy games and he talked about that was his big play as well which was he goes individual games are great we talked about alluvium and that type of thing and star atlas and such but he said you know if you if you really want to take a look at it studios and notes and he goes i like studios he named game swift i think we talked about ronin so i can definitely see that but any other piece of of uh, ronin that we should be aware of of uh, as far as like investors or here's another, another question for you People have said to me, like, you got to play the games, man. You got to play the games because that's where all the enjoyment comes from. And that's where actually I get the most NFTs and the most tokens from actually playing the games. Is that somewhat accurate? Yeah, I mean, there's some games that do have airdrops. As of right now, there's a lot of games that want to bring players. So there's a big opportunity. If you don't want to spend money in terms of like investment and you just want to put in your time, there is games out there. Uh, that do have airdrops right now because they want to bring those users in, right? They want to lure those users in. So it's a great opportunity for the people that don't want to invest and just sit back. If you really want to be active, there is a lot of games out there. You just got to pay attention. So right now, I just uploaded a video on a new game that has a 7 million token airdrop for free-to-play players so anybody can participate. That is 7% of their supply, and it's one of the best-looking uh, games out there in terms, of, um, in terms of the gaming ecosystem. And it's not AAA. It is a, a pixelated game as well, but I do see massive, massive potential because they are in the Magic ecosystem. And the Magic ecosystem, for the people that don't know, they, are, they got the biggest bag of Arbitrum from the airdrop, <laughs> okay. right? The biggest bag. So in the, in the DAO, they're the top. There's the top. So that's a reason why they got that airdrop. It's because they're an important piece of the Arbitrum ecosystem. The magic, the treasure DAO. Yeah, this is a very important piece of, the, uh, of, of Arbitrum. And within this, if you hit games right here, you're going to uh -huh. see they have a lot of indie games. That is their bread and butter, indie games. So if you go to Kuroto Beach, which is the sixth game, number six, yep. That one is having an airdrop. And they have two types of games. They have a PvP arena, and they also have an adventure mode. Holy smokes. These guys had a lot of games as well. It looks like yeah. everybody's just coming out. That's the thing. That's, okay, so what we know about this, and then before we move on, just to talk about, like, uh, validators. Uh, for Ronan, you can become a validator. I just took a look at it uh, as we were, be before we came on. And just, you know, if you want to become a validator for Ronan, watch out. Because uh, the requirements that I can see right here is 250,000 Ronin. And I think right now Ronin is roughly a buck twenty. So if you want to go that route, uh, maybe that's for you. That's <laughs> I don't know if that's for me, but uh, you know these types of games could be the big thing. So 
Kagi, we, we, we talked about Ronan and we talked about magic, but there was a video just put out actually end of October, mm -hmm. 100x crypto, crypto games. And he, and he talked about most of the things that we talked about in our original video. I mean, he talked about Game Swift, he talked about Gala, he talked about what else did you have? Immutable. Miria. Miria is pumping like hell. It's yeah. Crazy. Miria. Yep. And then also there was one that she was talking about scale. Yes. This, this is one that we actually had talked about on the on the on the channel as well. The only thing that that draw me to this project was zero gas, gasless mm -hmm. type of ecosystem. What, do you, what can you tell us about this one? Yeah, I mean, scale, full transparency. He, they paid me for this, um, uh, okay. but like 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 every like every chain right now, they're trying to find their market fit, right? Mm -hmm. So gaming, of course, is their market fit. It's the, it's the one that makes the most sense. So they have an incentive program, which I think is really interesting. Mm -hmm. A lot of games cannot get into Ronin. A lot of games cannot get into Immutable. A lot of games cannot get into GameSwift because there's a lot of people applying to be part of this ecosystem because they, ha they have the most hype. So you got something like Scale, where they're using some type of ZK technology. Uh -huh. And they have $100 million to give out to games so they're incentivizing people to go so that's why i took the sponsorship i'm like yo this makes sense i gotta so, make a game we gotta yeah, make a game Kay. If, we gotta if, make a game right now yeah if uh if a game is looking for funding they're looking for a place to to have a home yeah they might not have the users but you might take a bet there as a game developer and be like you know what i'm gonna go there i'm gonna get some money and i'm gonna build my game out all right oh. so that's why i took that that sponsorship it's not like i know a lot about scale but they do have a few games on it so first of all, thank you for saying that they paid me to do that because in this in this somewhat dirty industry that we are in, it's very <laughs> uncommon for people to say those things. So thank you, Kay. You appreciate it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I said it in the video too. I don't yeah. have a problem with that. I mean, the, you whatever, you know. <laughs> hey man, hey man. Look, if you get paid and everything in, in the description, of course, I say this is the affiliate link. This is not, of course, a, a sponsor is right above your head right there, crypto mm -hmm. IRA. At, Let's uh, go. at iTrust. And uh, unfortunately, Ben doesn't pay me for any of the Cryptoverse, but it is an affiliate link. If you want to check that out, go be my guest. So to wrap this up, Kagi, excellent answers, good things to look at. Let's, uh, let's shift gears for the last question and just talk about where things are going. And mm -hmm. of course, the different speed bumps that we're going to run up against, which are people who are going to say, this isn't needed. This is ridiculous. Why are we doing this? Web2 works just fine. Crypto isn't even needed in general. So what I'm coming from is there was a, a piece that we talked about. This is uh, John Reed Stark. I like John. He's a you know, pretty down-to-earth uh, guy. Hates crypto, but uh, not a bad guy. He's the president of John Reed Stark Consulting, uh, former chief SEC officer of Internet Enforcement. And he was, gave a comment yesterday about crypto. And he said this. He goes, because he doesn't understand why it's pumping. He says, for, <laughs> and believe me, this, John knows about crypto. He says, for crypto, there's no inherent value. There's no cash flow. There's no yield. There's no employees. There's no management. There's no balance sheet. There's no product. There's no service. So on this one, I think when, we, when people from the outside looking in, they take a look at crypto and they just see like the Bitcoins or they see like the XRP or the BitConnects or whatever you want to say. What can you say to people like that, especially people who are watching the video right now going, where's the utility? What actually gets done here? Where is the use case? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. For example, we could take GameSwift as an example. GameSwift is a blockchain that will have many games, right? If they succeed at what they're doing, having a platform like Steam, mm -hmm. that means that all those transactions, all those revenue is going to uh, be brought back a percentage of it. I think it's like a 20%. 20% of all the revenue is going to be brought back to token holders and stakers. So if we're talking about a platform that is worth right now, like Steam, couple billion dollars in valuation based mm. on their revenues. If GameSwift, uh, GameSwift achieves what they're intended to do, something like Steam, they like the Steam platform, that means that all that revenue, 20% of all that revenue is going to go back to token stakers. And we're talking about real yield. We're not talking about more tokens. There is a part of that 20% that is more tokens, but there's a, another part that is a real yield. 
So if you want to take a bet on games with into the future, 10 years down the line, this becomes a multi-billion dollar company producing massive amount of revenue with trading NFTs, premium currencies, and all of that, you can capture all that value through the GameSwift token. Now, that doesn't mean that's going to happen next year or in two years. That's probably going to take five to 10 years. That's the truth. So there is use cases for crypto. The thing is that we don't have the regulations in place to be able to do more revenue share tokens. That's the problem. That is the main issue that we have. But GameSwift is not in the United States, so they're doing it. So very few projects have tokens with real yield, but that is the future. Real yield is basically the same thing we see in the stock market, dividends, right? Right. So yeah, he's right, but there's, there's also something with the regulations that's happening that doesn't allow you to, to provide real yield for the people that ho hold the tokens. Sure. I can see that. I can also see it like, you know, and, and having kids and grandkids, like I can tell you, like, you know, when they go to like Roblox and then they're like, hey, give me some money. OK, here's money. And they, you know, they purchase Robux and they use yeah. the Robux and they bought all these things. I'm like, where'd the money go? Well, I got this cool, you know, thing. pickaxe and I got this cool thing. I'm like, this is stupid. Can I get any money back? No. Well, now maybe like parents look at that and go, okay, let me get this straight. So I can pay for this and then maybe you can sell this to somebody else in the game. Or maybe you can bring this over to another game within the ecosystem of a game Swift, of a Ronin or something else. Well, that sounds a lot better than me just putting it into Roblox and, uh, or, mine, or uh, Minecraft and just, you know, ton of different uh, fun. So I can see a little bit of a utility right there uh, moving forward. So definitely. And le let me tell you, like mm -hmm. the president of Roblox just came out I don't know, like a month ago, saying, mm -hmm. talking about NFTs. Yeah, in the future, we want to implement NFTs. So, and, and the president of Roblox as well, he's invested in the Sky Mavis team. He's invested in Ronin Network. So, obviously, these people are invested in many things. It's not like uh, I'm throwing this name out there, like, yo, go invest in Ronin now. They get a lot of opportunities. I'm sure they're invested in hundreds of companies, anything from AI to crypto to whatever. But the president of Roblox does know the Sky Mavis team very well. And he's taking a look very closely to see how this um, gaming ecosystems develop over time so that he can take the best out of that and see how he can implement it in, in Roblox in the future. Because this is the future and he knows it. So. Well said, Kagi. Man, look, you gave us a lot of information in a short amount of time. I know you watch the video right now. It's a lot to digest. So I would uh, highly recommend because things are going to start moving faster and quicker, mm -hmm. especially as we get into the, this bull run end of the year, moving into 2024 and a Bitcoin halving. So if you'd be so kind, I think it might behoove you to uh, uh, enjoy the content that Kagi puts out on X, also on uh, YouTube. Find them over there great game or great videos like the 100x gaming series and of course all the different games you can actually get into and they're not like hard games to play like some of these like triple a me and kagi are on the same wavelength i think it's going to be a casual type of games that'll take over but only time will tell only time will tell yes yes and i think the and last thing i would say man mm -hmm. if people use the the coin market cap watch list that i gave last time it's a great way. If we look at that watch list, we can see, I would say most of the tokens did pretty well since we talked about it. And you're right, Abagachi didn't do that well. But bro, that watch list is filled with a bunch of tokens that did well. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, guys, everything is going to pump. We're speculating here. <laughs> we are speculators. You know what we'll do? So in the description, everybody, I'm going to put in that watch list. Okay, mm -hmm. you can bring it over to me and then I'll let everybody uh, view it. You guys go from there. All right. So, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. Kagi, I appreciate it once again. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive and things are going to move fast. So, subscribe to somebody to get your information. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. See you on the next one. Yeah, well, wait, because we're going to do a little Q&A. So, uh, again, I want to thank uh, Kagi for coming on for the second time and dropping some really great information. Also, uh, I have to apologize because the last time he was on, he told me about this watch list and I didn't put it in. So uh, blah, blah, blah. where am I? Ah, here I am. So I added this in. There's a link in the description for Kagi's personal watch list of gaming IP coins. And some of these I've never heard of. Like this one, has anybody heard of Wilder World? Well, it's up 34% in seven days. Star Atlas, yeah. Smooth Love Potion, all right. That I think is uh, Axie 
Wag Me Games? The, the, again, I don't know what that is. ZTX, Spinoans, what? 56%. Something to watch out for. And then also, these are the gaming chain tokens. Gala up 17. Everybody knows that one. Magic, what he was talking about, 14%. We Mix, 60% in a week. So just take a look at that. That's personally what uh, Kagi is uh, observing and watching on his watch list itself. And you can check that out. Uh, again, links in the description. And then lastly, as a quick reminder, we're going to have NFA Live tomorrow. That'll be on my site. It's uh, me, Ben, and the Cryptoverse, and Guy from Coin Bureau. Actually, Guy is going to be out saving the world, doing whatever he does. So we'll have Jessica on uh, next time or tomorrow, and we'll do the NFA Live show. That should be a good show. And uh, lastly, I'll just say, John says, Rob isn't getting paid to promote Ben Cowan's site. Pay the man, Ben. Stop being cheap. Look, Ben's got four kids. He's got a lot of mouths to feed. I'm okay with talking about his site. It's a great site. That's it for today. So look, thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe, all that good stuff.